In this tutorial, we will continue the step-by-step -step automation of the use case of OCRing business cards and uploading extracted contracts to Salesforce. In part one, we built a recording that OCRs business cards and saves contact information to recorder variables. In part two, we will be implementing a mechanism to upload contact information to Salesforce. We have decided to use a CSV file to upload a contact to Salesforce. Hence, we can divide the process into two subtasks. First, save the contact as a CSV file. Second, upload the CSV file to Salesforce. As in the previous video, we will be using RPA Recorder for implementation. Let's start with the first recording that will save the contact information to a CSV file. The file will have two rows, where the first row contains headers and the second row contains data. As we want to use variables from the previous step, we need to create them in this recording with exactly the same names. This way, the system will automatically transfer extracted information from one step to another. Additionally, we will introduce two new variables, path and file name. The variable path will be used to store a path to a directory where the bot will save the generated CSV files. It can be any folder in the local file system. We want our bot to create a folder output inside the current project in the workspace and save the file in this folder. If you're not sure about the location of your project, go to Media Files tab, find the folder with your current recording, and open its properties. We can copy the path from here, paste it into the path variable, and add slash output slash at the end. We will keep the variable file name empty for now. It will be populated by the bot. Now, let's get down to building our recording. In the first action, the bot will create the target folder if it is not created yet. It will skip it if the folder already exists. The location is provided in the variable path, which we just defined manually. We want each CSV file to have the same name as the business card, from which it stores the data. To implement it, we need to do some string manipulations. In particular, extract the file name from the URL of the corresponding business card image. Image URL is a string variable, so the simplest way to extract a part of it would be to use action substring between. We can see that the file name is located between the text B cards and a dot. For example, in case of processing this business card, we expect to have value business card 3 in the file name variable. Now we can create a new file by combining path, which we defined manually, file name, calculated by the system, and the extension CSV. The create file action also allows us to define the file content. First, let's add the headers, or a row of comma-separated column names. To avoid additional mapping while importing to Salesforce, it would be better to use the expected Salesforce names that you can find on the mapping stage while uploading any file. The headers row will be the same for all files, so we can define it as a string variable and add its name to the file content. Choose option Overwrite. Then, we need to add a line break to the file. Let's create a special variable, br, to store the line break character. One of the possible ways to populate it would be by using the join strings action. Join empty br variable with itself, select windows line break as a separator, and put the result back to br. Now we can add a write to file action to append the data to the already created file. We will specify the file path, file name, extension, and the content we would like to append. Inside the content field, we can combine plain text with variables. First, we will put the br variable that contains the line break character, and then add the variables with the data extracted from the business card, separating them with a comma. Note that the variables should be added in the order defined in the header row. The business process step for creating CSV files is ready. Later on, as a part of a business process, this recording will receive image URL and extracted data during runtime. But now, for testing purposes, let's hard code these values and play the recording. If all was done right, inside the project folder, we will see a newly created output folder containing a CSV file with the same name as the process's business card. We can open the file in Notepad or Microsoft Excel. As expected, there are two rows, header and data. Now, let's proceed to the next step, uploading CSV files to Salesforce. 
Salesforce is a web application, so in this recording, we will be using the recorder's web automation capabilities. Let's start with launching a browser and opening the Salesforce login page. We will maximize the window for convenience. The bot needs to know credentials to access Salesforce. We will create two recorder variables to store them, login and password. In order to set the credentials in the login form, we will be using web element action in mode set value. The bot will find the target field by its unique identifier, called XPath, and populate it with the data from the variable. You can get it in Chrome and Firefox browsers by using the option Inspect on the target web element. You can watch a separate video tutorial about using XPaths. Then, we will program the bot to press Enter and wait until the home page is opened. To achieve this, we will add a Wait for Image action and capture the logo of the home page. The Import button is located on the Contacts form. We can reach it by a few mouse click actions or just copying its URL and providing an Open Website action. In order to click the button Import, we will add a mouse click action and select the Web Element mode. The bot can find the element either by its XPath or by displayed text. As there is only one element with text Import on the page, we can easily go with the Searching by Text approach. We will program the bot to click the next buttons the same way, Accounts and Contacts, Add New and Update Existing Records, CSV. Note that all these elements are located in a dedicated iframe, so we need to check the Search in iframes checkbox and specify the iframe XPath. If you face issues with using text mode for clicking the Choose File button, try using XPath. In the Open File dialog pop-up, we need to specify the full path to our CSV file. This dialog window doesn't belong to the Salesforce website. It is part of the Windows operating system, which means we cannot use web automation here. Instead, we can send the file path to this dialog via keystroke actions. We can do it in three steps. First, build a string containing the full path to the file by combining path, file name, and CSV extension. We will store it in the variable full path. Second, copy the value of variable full path to the clipboard. Third, paste the value from the clipboard to the dialog window via keystrokes action using combination keystroke control plus V. You may also try another way without clipboard by using a keystrokes action set to type a value from the string variable into the active field. Note that typing works slower with long text. After providing the full path to the CSV file, we need to press Enter on the keyboard, click Next two times, and finally, click the button Start Import. The implementation is complete. When this script runs as a part of a business process, it will get values for variables path and file name from the previous step. Now, to test the script, we will specify these values manually. The script will use the CSV files generated as a result of the previous recording. Let's verify how the bot will upload it to Salesforce. We can see that the bot logs into the application, navigates to the target page, and selects the CSV file. Now, if we go to the Contacts page in Salesforce, we will see that a new test contact has been created. In this video, we created two recordings. The Save to File recording creates a CSV file in the local file system and populates it with contact details from appropriate variables. The Upload to Salesforce recording logs into the Salesforce application and imports the generated CSV file with contact details. In the next video, we will combine these recordings in one business process and run it using input data.